Welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news from Congressman McCarthy, news of new bills Governor Brown has signed attacking pregnancy clinics free speech, the latest presidential numbers, and an update on State Route 58, today's gas prices, weather, sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitney. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. In news from Washington, Congressman Kevin McCarthy released the following statement on sending the National Defense Authorization Act to the President's desk. Today, Congress sends President Obama a bill with widespread bipartisan support that authorizes defense spending at the exact level the President requested. It authorizes the funding he wants, empowers and protects our testing centers at China Lake and Edwards Air Force Base, gives our military personnel a raise, and improves the military retirement savings system. What is unfathomable, however, is that even though President Obama doesn't have any problems with the bill itself, he has announced that he plans to veto this bill in a partisan gambit to increase domestic spending. Putting our military readiness at risk and blocking reforms our servicemen and women need by vetoing this funding is not only irresponsible, it just doesn't make sense. The president is even threatening to do this at a time when he has recommitted troops to Afghanistan. Our country and armed forces deserve better, and the president should sign this bill. In news from Governor Jerry Brown, he signed legislation last Friday requiring crisis pregnancy centers, which often try to steer women away from abortion, to provide information about reproductive services available elsewhere, including abortion. Assembly Bill 775 by Assemblyman David Chu out of San Francisco applies to all California facilities offering pregnancy-related services, compelling them to notify clients of the state's free and low-cost alternative programs for family planning, prenatal care, and abortion. Proponents of the bill, including supporters of abortion rights, said it would be better to inform women of important health care matters. Opponents and Republican lawmakers say the legislation amounted to an unconstitutional attack on private entities' core beliefs. Numerous organizations have announced they will challenge the new law in the courts. They are seeing this as an infringement of their First Amendment right to free speech. In another story from Governor Brown, on Monday he joined forces with an unprecedented alliance of heads of state, city, and state leaders, convened by the World Bank Group and International Monetary Fund to urge countries and companies around the globe to put a price on carbon. We can't stand idly by as billions of tons of carbon pollution spew into the atmosphere, said Governor Brown. California has put a price on carbon, but these efforts mean little unless the world's government and business leaders join us and go even further. The carbon pricing panel was convened to spur further, faster action ahead of the Paris climate talks, and in addition to Governor Brown, it includes German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Chilean President Michel Bachelet, French President Francois Hollande, as well as leaders from Ethiopia, the Philippines, Mexico, Rio de Janeiro. These global leaders are calling on their peers to join them in pricing carbon to steer the global economy towards a low-carbon, productive, competitive future without the dangerous levels of carbon polluting driving climate change. There has never been a global movement to put a price on carbon at this level and with this degree of unison. It marks a turning point from the debate on the economic systems needed for low carbon growth to the implementation of policies and pricing mechanics to deliver jobs, clean growth, and prosperity, said World Bank Group President Jim Yong Kim. The science is clear, the economics compelling, and we now see political leadership emerging to take green investment at a speed commensurate with the climate change. Around the world, about 40 nations and 23 cities, states, and regions have implemented or are putting a price on carbon with programs and mechanisms covering about 12% of global greenhouse gas emissions. The number of implemented or scheduled carbon pricing instruments has nearly doubled since 2012, reaching an aggregate market value of about $50 billion. Now, if they would just be able to get the major offenders of pollution like China, India, and Russia, maybe they would make a difference. In case you don't know what carbon pricing is, here's the definition. A carbon price is a cost or tax applied to carbon pollution to encourage polluters to reduce the amount of greenhouse gas they emit into the atmosphere. 
Economists widely agree that introducing a carbon price is the single most e effective way for countries to reduce their emissions. So, if you use something that the state determines to be a pollutant, then you get a tax on the fuel source. More simply put, the move is to do away with power plants and cars that use fossil fuels to move to green energy. The tax is then used to support the cost to move to green energy. Now an update on State Route 58. The California Department of Transportation is still continuing to clear mud, debris, and vehicles from State Route 58 between Mojave and Tehachapi. This was due to a flood that occurred last Thursday. Mud flowed from the surrounding mountains onto State Route 58. The highway closed due to the amount of mud and vehicles that were engulfed by the mud. It was discovered that approximately one and a half miles of roadway was covered in five to eight feet of mud. 78 passenger vehicles, two buses, 38 trucks, one RV, and one trailer were stuck in the mud. Emergency personnel were able to safely remove all travelers and move them to emergency shelters. There have been no injuries or fatalities. 33 passenger vehicles, 13 big rigs, and approximately four-tenths of a mile of mud is in the process of being removed now. Caltrans has 52 employees on site with 11 loaders, 5 graders, 14 dump trucks, an excavator, and a fuel truck. There are also four engineers and two geologists assessing the damage. Granite Construction has been hired to assist with the excavation and mud removal. Granite Construction has 27 employees with 9 loaders, 2 dozers, 3 excavators, 1 scraper, 1 pettibone forklift, and 33 to 60 end dump haulers. State Route 58 is still closed to the traveling public until all vehicles have been extracted and all the mud is clear. There may be roadway repairs needed as well. It is estimated that the state will open the Route 58 by Thursday, tomorrow. The traveling public should avoid this section of highway and plan an alternate route. For information in regards to vehicles that were ex excavated, please contact Bishop California Highway Patrol Dispatch at 760-872-5900. So for now, the only way to Bakersfield is via 178 through the Kern Valley. Now stay with us for the latest in presidential polls coming up after the break. Welcome back. The latest in presidential polls has results tallied by CNN have revealed that Hillary Clinton is leading the Democrats. She decisively beat out Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Hillary Clinton is at 45%, Bernie Sanders at 29%, and Joe Biden at 18%. Clinton is still the candidate to beat for the Democrats. Most critics believe that she won the first debate and her numbers have increased following her performance. While Sanders put in a strong performance, his numbers in the polls have yet to climb to where they will need to go if he wants to become the Democratic nomination. Sanders can still climb and beat Clinton, but he will have to step up in the second debate and come out with an exceptional performance. And it's been reported today that Joe Biden has announced that he is not going to run for President of the United States. For Jim Webb and other Democratic candidates, there is virtually no chance that they will rise to the rankings to become legitimate candidates. On the Republican side, we see these results. CNN reports that Donald Trump and Ben Carson now stand alone at the top of the Republican field, as Carly Fiorina's brief foray into the top tier of candidates appears to have ended. Fiorina has lost 11 points in the last month declining from 15% support and second place to 4% and a tie for 7th place. At the same time, Carson has gained 8 points and joins Trump as the only two candidates with support above 20%. As in early September, before Farina's spike to, in support, Trump and Carson are the first choice candidates of about half of the potential Republican electorate. All told, nearly two-thirds of Republican voters choose Trump or Carson as either their first or second choice for the nomination. Overall, Trump's 27% leads the field, followed by Carson at 22%, both above their nearest competitors. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush and Florida Senator Marco Rubio are tied for third place with 8%, followed by Mike Huckabee and Rand Paul each with 5%. Fiorina, Chris Christie, and Ted Cruz each have 4% support, while Kasich is at 3%. Rick Santorum stands at 2%, and Lizzie Graham is at 1%. And in the city news, don't forget that the next regular city council meeting is tonight at City Hall at 6 o'clock. The biggest item on the agenda is the last item to be discussed. It will be the public's first viewing of a study for the replacement of the city's wastewater treatment plant. 
This has been at least 10 years in coming. So after the news, you still have time to make it down there and participate. The Indian Wells Gem and Mineral Society have announced their upcoming 60th annual Gem and Mineral Show. The show will take place on Saturday and Sunday, November 7th and 8th. This is the same date as the Petroglyph Festival coming up. The event will be at the Desert Empire Fairgrounds in Mesquite Hall. It will run Saturday from 9 to 5 p.m. and Sunday from 9 to 5 p.m. Admission is free. For more information, contact Vicki Black at 760-375-1053 or Ron Schiller at 760-377-5053. And again in two weeks, the second annual Petroglyph Festival will come. This year's event will be bigger than last year's event. Last year, thousands of people attended the event. The main part will be on Balsam Street for a two-day street fair. There will also be tours onto the base for actual viewing of the actual petroglyphs. There is also scheduled a time capsule to be buried in Petroglyph Park Friday evening. So this is the largest event Ridgecrest has to offer. Plan on coming out and have a great day. And don't forget that tomorrow the Desert Empire Fair starts. The fair opens at 4 p.m. on Thursday and will run through Sunday. The fair will have rides from Butler Amusements. There will be about 100 vendors, concessionaires, and local groups displaying their items. And there will be featured events Friday and Saturday nights as well. There will be a rodeo and a concert on Friday and Saturday evenings. These special events will be free with a paid admission to the fair. There will also be other performers doing things all throughout the fair. There will be all sorts of various performances. There will be a jello eating contest, a root beer chugging contest, a Lego building contest. So the fair is the place to be this weekend. Now in KZN continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's gas prices for Ridgecrest and some surrounding areas. Since my report on Monday, gas prices were pretty steady throughout the areas we monitor. The lowest price here in Ridgecrest is still $2.91 per gallon. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is ranging from $2.91 to $3.09 a gallon. Lancaster is ranging from $275 to $307. The LA Valley area is $273 to $289 in the Bishop area, 335 to 347. We have four stations coming in at the 291 figure and one station at 293. Kind of looks like prices around the region are leveled off. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Now stay tuned for weather and sports when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. The National Weather Service is forecasting a risk of severe thunderstorms across parts of the southern U.S. from southern and eastern New Mexico into Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. Excessive rainfall will bring a threat of flash flooding to parts of the southern plains. Temperatures across the nation. Carolinas came in at 68. Georgia, 70. Arkansas, 78. Northern Texas, 63. New Mexico, 51. And Los Angeles came in at 72. And for our local forecast here in the IWV, tonight clear with a low around 55, northeast wind 5 miles per hour. On Thursday, sunny with a high near 77, west-southwest wind 5 miles per hour. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 58, west-southwest wind 5 miles per hour. Friday, sunny with a high near 79, north-northwest wind 5 miles per hour. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 59, east wind 5 miles per hour. On Saturday, sunny with a high near 86, calm wind. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 62, southeast wind 5 miles per hour. Sunday will be sunny with a high near 89, calm wind, south 5 miles per hour. Sunday night, mostly clear with a low around 63, west wind 5 miles per hour. And then on Monday, sunny with a high near 87, south-southwest wind 5 miles per hour. And as a look at your forecast for the IWV, now back to Tom and the rest of the KZGN News. Thanks, Keith. And now Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Wednesday afternoon to everyone. Let's start with uh, local sports and talk about Burroughs Volleyball. The team defeated Asperia on Monday here in Ridgecrest. Three straight sets. They are now 3-3 three and three in league play, 14-4 and four overall. They'll travel today, Wednesday, to Oak Hills, and the JV and the freshman team will also play this afternoon at Oak Hills. 
All right, Saracoso Volleyball. The Coyotes will hit the road today. They will take on San Bernardino Valley tonight in San Bernardino. And then their next home game will be a week from Friday here at Saracoso. All right, Major League Baseball. Well, I thought the Cubs would maybe give the Mets uh, uh, at least a tussle, but not so far yet. 3 nothing is a lead right now in games. The Mets beat Chicago 5-2 to last night in the Windy City. The Mets right now are just hitting the ball well, pitching really good. And talk about pitching. The Royals bullpen, maybe the best bullpen in the history of Major League Baseball. They beat Toronto 14-2. to on Tuesday to take a commanding 3-1 to lead in that series. That would be kind of a fun World Series, Kansas City and the Mets. Kind of some cold weather there, and it will go into early November. I think that will be a lot of fun, but it's not over yet, and uh, the Cubs may uh, end up coming back, and so might the Blue Jays, but I wouldn't bank on it. All right, it's a big weekend in college football. Those that love college football, oh, you're in for some treats. Number 20, Cal. The last time Cal was in the top 20 was seven years ago. The Bears 5-1 and one take on UCLA 4-2 and two at 6 o'clock in the Rose Bowl. Auburn will take on Arkansas at Arkansas. Don't count Arkansas out right now. Auburn the number seven team in all the land. Baylor will take on Iowa State. Baylor the number two team in all the land. Baylor averaging right now about 60 points per game in their last four games. They are an offensive machine. Texas, the Longhorns, after a nice upset win at Oklahoma, hit the road. They play Kansas State. Uh, it's a big game for Charlie Strong and crew with the Longhorns. Number 20, Northwestern. They've lost two games in a row now after starting out 5-0. and They'll take on Nebraska. The Cornhuskers, 3-4. and Mike Riley, first-year coach. He was at Oregon State for many years, struggling a little bit in Lincoln. Tennessee will be at number eight, Alabama. Alabama right now playing very well after the one loss to Ole Miss. Number 23, Duke. We're not talking basketball, we're talking football. Takes on Virginia Tech. Duke's only lost one game this season. 14, Oklahoma State takes on poor Kansas. Kansas uh, is 0-6. They are, have not won a game. They have a 14-game losing streak, and uh, things have been tough in Lawrence football-wise. Number seven, Michigan State plays a very good Indiana team. That could be a pretty uh, interesting game in the Hoosier State. It'll be in Bloomington. Now, Michigan State, for those, again, I'll say it because it's worth looking at, for those that didn't see the ending of the Michigan State-Michigan game last Saturday, go to the Michigan State football dot com site and watch what happened the last play of the game who would have thought crazy ending Michigan had them all the way lose the end you got to feel for the Wolverines all right number three Utah takes on USC Trojans a tough loss in South Bend against Notre Dame Utah their best team maybe ever number three right now rated and Stanford who really nobody had in the top ten or thought about being in the top ten Currently at number 10, they'll take on Washington. Stanford is a very good football team. That is your sports for this Wednesday. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. All of us at KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for a Ridgecraft Talk coming up next.